Hello everyone, it's Fred Staub and Les Jackson and we are here with you. Uh, we are ready to go. We got a lot of information, including uh, less BMWs with man manual transmissions. That's interesting, right? What's that? You mean that, that thing in the middle that you move around? Yeah, that thing in the middle that you move around. And mm -hmm. uh, we're also going to uh, talk about the new uh, BMW 4 Series and the Z4. We're going to talk about um, large SUVs. Are they just too large for guardrails? They apparently are. One study says yeah. the guardrails now need to be redesigned because electric SUVs are too heavy. We're going to tell well. you a little, little bit about Jeep's uh, Wagoneer S. And we're also going to have Andrew... Uh, Stally, who is the brand manager of the 2025 um, Ford Explorer, which just came out this week. So that's all you know, coming up. The Explorer has been around a long, long time. It sure has. And they say that is one of the vehicles that got people into uh, SUVs. So, yeah, we will uh, talk about that and more when we come back on Cruise Control. Control. Your on air automotive magazine with co hosts Fred Stodd and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news will fix or repair your car on the on air. air. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin control. because you're on cruise control. Cruise control. Cruise control. Hey everybody, welcome to Cruise Control. This is your on-air automotive magazine and you know us very well. I'm Les Jackson. The guy over there, am I pointing the right way, uh, is Fred Stubb. And uh, we have, uh, you know, actually we've got some really interesting, diverse stories this week. Um, you know, EVs are kind of big in the news, but not big in the market. And um, we have a guest, right? Yeah, we sure do, Les. Uh, we're going to be talking about the new Ford Explorer that just came out this week. Um, it is the 2025 model. And uh, we have Andrew Stalley, who is the brand manager for the 2025 Ford Explorer. So we'll talk about that. Popular model. Got a lot of questions for for him and if you have a question for andrew just put it in the comments and we will uh, we will get to it sure. uh, uh also um one study says that um uh, well guardrails are just too big to handle large full-size super heavy duty evs and uh, they crashed one into guardrails to show what happens you know now they're talking about because people want large SUVs we're talking about changing all the guardrails in the country I say <laughs> if you own one you get to pay for um, <laughs> by the way BMW reveals the new uh, 2025 4 series and uh, the Z4 with a six-speed manual that's a you know clutch and all that stuff I have to tell you a uh, Z4 is quite a machine. I had one a uh, couple of summers ago, and uh, I was very impressed with it. I thought it was a, a cool, sporty car. Yeah, I agree. I've never been fond of the looks, but it really is a, a nice driving sports car. Yeah, yeah. And uh, talking a little bit about the, uh, well, not decline, but let's say the reduced shine. Stag stagnation. Stagnation. Uh, over at Volvo, they have decided to stop funding Polestar, their kind of performance electric car brand or sub-brand of uh, Volvo. And we'll tell you what's going on with that. That's a lot of news like that in the auto industry. Yeah. Uh, a lot of manufacturers thinking about, hey, we've got to get hybrids and plug-in hybrids in the lineup because that's what people want. 
That's right. And speaking of electrics, uh, Jeep <laughs> reveals its battery electric Wagoneer S. So, well, well you have a big, big electric. Well, you know, these things have uh, are in the pipeline, so they're going to reveal yeah. them. So, hey, uh, that's all coming up. All that and more when we come back on Cruise Control. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We will be right back, so stay tuned. Okay. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Uh, it wouldn't be a week around Cruise Control less, unless we didn't talk about reveals. And this week, we've got a That's couple right. of reveals from BMW, including their 4 Series Coupe and Convertible. In this case, it really is a coupe. Because it's got two doors. <laughs> An old school coupe, I would say. Yeah. Uh, it's got uh, updated four and six cylinder engines with a mild 48 volt mild hybrid technology system. Hey, BMW is getting on the trend that that's the way to go. Um, and these will be mild hybrids, meaning that you won't be able to travel in the complete ev mode at any time you're just really enhancing acceleration and also uh mileage as well it kind of lives in the background it's got a uh, a two liter four cylinder as the base engine and a three liter six cylinder twin power turbo uh as the upgraded engine both have this 48 volt mild hybrid system that improves both efficiency and responsiveness, and that's a that's a nice pairing, isn't it? I would imagine, it? yeah. Yeah. Um, looks like a great update from BMW. Uh, a lot of new uh, exterior paint shades and alloy wheels, new steering wheels with standard gear shift paddles, um, new digital climate control, a new look kidney grill. <laughs> it's always gotten... Uh, controversial with uh, many people, uh, they're the size of their grill. Um, exclusive touches like an M carbon exterior package. Uh, you know, I think I think it's a good update. I kind of like the front end on it. I kind of like how the, I guess the uh, those little areas by the, where the fog lights would go are kind of shaped. They're not uh, they're not just rectangles. They're kind of shaped. Um, but I think this is going to be a good up. Um, upgrade to the vehicle and what does it cost well a lot a lot uh <laughs> for 2025 bmw 430i coupe basically the entry level fifty thousand seven hundred. that would be with the four cylinder the uh, 430x drive coupe all-wheel drive fifty two thousand seven hundred. the 430i convertible fifty eight thousand seven hundred. And then you really start to step up the X Drive convertible sixty thousand seven hundred, the BMW M four forty i coupe. This is the one with the twin tower, twin power uh, six. Uh, that would be sixty four thousand two fifty, and then it goes on and on and on. Uh, the top of the line would be the uh, BMW M four forty i X Drive convertible. Topping out at seventy four thousand to hmm. fifty. Uh, nice looking car, though, isn't it? It's a nice. It actually is a nice looking car. Um, it, it's. I've just taken it off my list for, <laughs> for, for fiscal reasons. Fiscal reasons. Uh, but uh, yeah, but it, it. I will agree. It's a handsome car. I do like the two door coupe. Um, I realize they're impractical for it's carrying real, friends. It's a real coupe, though. That's that's the thing. I mean, but but yeah. uh, if you want something even sportier, the Z4 uh, now uh, is going to come again with a six-speed manual, 
as an option. Um, and they have a German word for this. Let me try. A uh, Hans Schlaff. Uh, Hans Schalter. Schlatt Schalter. Yeah, Hans Schalter. Hans Schalter, which means hand shift. Hand shifter. Uh I I really like this E4. I I was I drove one and was very impressed with it. I thought it was a great car. I thought it was a fun car, very sophisticated. Um, you know, and I I got a little bit of the Aston Martin feeling without even having that high a price tag. You know, it it felt a bit exotic, but not too exotic. Um, and I don't think it gets enough love. But but let's talk about what's new for this. Uh, the 2025 BMW Z4 M40i six-speed manual. For the first time ever, it is available with a six-speed manual transmission. And it uh, includes the unique suspension tuning, wheels, paint colors, interior trimmed, 382 horsepower hand shifter, accelerates from zero to That's 60. stout. 4.2 seconds. That package price is thirty five hundred. Any package price from BMW that's thirty five hundred seems like a deal, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, that's uh, th that actually for them is cheap. Yeah, we'll tell you a little bit more about the uh, Z4 for twenty twenty five when we come back on cruise control. I'm Fred Staub. He's Les Jackson. We are your on air automotive magazine. So stay tuned. Plenty more coming up including guardrails that just can't hold big electric SUVs. They're busting out all over. Right? We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Cruise Control. We were talking about the Z4, the new Z4 BMW. Uh, we both agree that it's a, it's a really nice driving car. What we don't agree on is Fred thinks it's good looking. I don't. I don't. But, <laughs> but hey, so what? Um, oh, and I anyway. was going to get you one, and now you don't want it. Well, well, now in that case, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's. <laughs> but uh but it is it is uh, um a little on the pricey side yeah by the way they have staggered wheels for the first time on this 19s up front 20s in the back yeah um so don't try to put don't try to uh, rotate your tires <laughs> no don't do that and of course they're still made in spartanburg south carolina yeah pretty nice uh nice looking vehicle i think um so do we have total pricing on it? Uh, no, we know one package is $3,500, which I think is is a deal <laughs> from BMW. But, yeah, I uh, wonder, wonder what it costs to insure that. I You don't see a lot of Z4s, at least where I am, and it's very big BMW, although everyone buys the same BMW. Yeah, I, order them. I, you know... I, I'm trying to remember when the last Z4 I saw was. This is the last one I drove for, for the time. press car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I But I liked it, and I got a lot of looks. I don't think people knew what it was, frankly, until they looked yeah, at the front. Yeah, that's probably right. You know, but it uh, it was a great performer, and, uh, you know, it it's it's a cool car. Didn't we we drove one one time? I remember that's when they when they first came out with the four cylinder model, right? And we were like, "This is terrible. <laughs> it's, it's slow." <laughs> it's, <laughs> and then we found the sport button, right? <laughs> yeah, we found we discovered that it was on it was on parking at the you know at the garage mode. So yeah, it was it in valet mode. Much power. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Wow." It's even, yeah, oh, it's much faster now. Hmm. Well, uh, let's talk about a new study, Les. You and I have been talking about this, and uh, the problem is getting exacerbated by the weight of certain big 
SUVs, electric SUVs that are coming out in the test. This is a test yeah. done by the University of Nebraska at the School of Mid- Midwest Roadside Safety. They used a Rivian, uh, Rivian R1T. That's, that's big. And heavy some of these large SUVs are super heavy. They're almost ten thousand pounds, right? That the Hummer and and I mean some that's other... that's heavy truck level. Yes, yeah, heavy truck level, right? And they go right through the guardrails, what what we call Jersey barriers around here, those concrete uh, formed barriers. This went right through it. It ripped itself up, but but it wow. kept going. It went through about three of them before it came to a stop. And uh, it's they got a lot of people talking about what what should be done. I mean, you can't replace all of these barriers, right? Well, if you ask the car companies, yes, go ahead and replace them. Um, <laughs> but no, you can't. And I, I honestly don't know what the answer is. Um, it's useless to put signs up saying, you know, your SUV will go through the barrier, so drive carefully. Yeah. Um, that's like saying speed up and try it. Try <laughs> and try it, it. Hey, it's tough. It's an SUV. Yeah. I'll just drive it into it. Um, it also They also wear out the road. Yeah. And they won't be paying gas tax. And you're wearing out the road more than like the guy in his Corolla, right? Very much. Um, <laughs> this is, and, and they result in uh, many more pedestrian deaths than other types of vehicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Big so, flat front ends, more hmm. mass. Uh, you know, I wonder driving them. Do you have to drive more like a tractor trailer because you got more weight and it takes more time to stop? Yeah, it's you actually can't see the pedestrians as well. Right. The hoods Even are, though you have all this visibility. The hoods come out and they just <clears throat> fall yeah. off a cliff. Yeah. 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 It's it's an interesting uh it's an interesting problem and uh how it will be dealt with, we don't know, but if uh, you want to check that out, it's the University of Nebraska, their school of Midwest Roadside Safety um study, and they said the guardrails just can't hold them back. So uh, well, one thing that's being held back is uh, funding for Polestar. Volvo Cars has decided to stop funding Polestar, their electric performance uh, brand. And they may hand it 100% over to Geely, who um, is the Chinese company that owns a big stake in Volvo. Right now, Volvo and Geely shared Polestar, but it looks like Polestar may become a 100% acquisition acquisition for the Chinese company. So they're well, trying to save money for developing Volvo products. Can't blame them. Can't blame them. It seems to me that Geely would, would really embrace this because now they would have two uh, popular models, makes, uh, brands, for sale in the u.s and and that's what the chinese want yeah so kind of kind of big news for that um but we'll see where it goes uh polestar's interesting looking car for sure interesting uh looking brand for sure so uh, let's talk uh, a little bit you and i have been talking about how kind of the electric vehicle shine is going off the electrical vehicle uh world but that has not stopped new models from being introduced no nope. and we had some weird teaser footage before but uh, now we have actual renderings of the all new electric all electric jeep wagoneer s it will be completely electric and it is built on the uh battery electric native STLA large platform, which is a new platform for, from Stellantis. And it will be uh, integrated with mindful materials and design focus features, including a select terrain toggle and dynamic color selectable ambient lighting. 
Ah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> What's interesting yeah. here is the S model was always sort of a entry level, you know, maybe one step up from the base, but they've selected this name for the all electric model. I think I think the design cues look pretty cute, cool. Um and I I think um you know that will be a hit. Uh I can see it has the um a lot of the features that we've seen in other vehicles like Mercedes with the screen all the way across. Obviously the rotary shifter uh that's been popular in Jeeps and and Ram products. Certainly identifiable as a Jeep. Um, True. Probably going to be pricey. I'm interested to see the mm -hmm. range on this because that STLA large platform, they're talking range in the 350 area. But I don't think we have any information on that. Um, and will this be trail rated? I would say probably it will. It's a Jeep product, so you can take it off on the uh, on the trail uh which will be interesting following on our our previous story um with the weight of these larger suvs battery yeah electric suvs um what will that be like on the trail um well how, what would it be like on muddy trail yeah that's a good question so i don't know yeah I don't know. But, um, um, but it, it, it's but then again, if you if you own one of these, you know it's going to be a hundred grand plus. Um, easy. You're not going to go, you know, heavy off off road. <laughs> uh, just, I just you know, oh, you'll I don't buy believe a, you will. You'll buy a Wrangler for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, you'll tow a Wrangler. When we come back, we're going to talk about the 2025 Ford Explorer which was introed this week, just a couple of days ago. So stay tuned to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Stobbe, he's Les Jackson. We'll be right back. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. It's Fred Staub and Les Jackson, and uh, big week over at Ford. Les, uh, we are taking a look at the brand new Ford Explorer, and there's a lot to talk about. So we thought, why not? Let's invite Andrew Staley, who is the brand manager, and uh, Andrew. Uh, Welcome to Cruise Control, and uh, you must have had a a great week, uh, I tell you what, or a busy week for sure. Very much so. Yeah, we unveiled on on the first, and we've we've hit the ground running and been nonstop ever since. So happy to join this morning, talk with you guys. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this. When you go to redesign such a popular model, I mean, what do you do? You go out and you ask people, what would you like? You like the current product? Maybe you ask current owners. And what were they saying they wanted more of? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's a big part that we lean into for 25 model year. So as America's all-time best-selling SUV, we've sold over 8 million units since 1990. Wow. So that's a lot of customers, a lot of opinions, and a lot wow. of feedback that we can tap into. So for 25 model year, we've done just that. We've kept what customers love, and we've added what they've been asking for. And that's a redesigned interior, bold exterior styling, uh, all of the latest and greatest technology, and then even more standard equipment. You know, I have a question, and I and I won't uh, I won't be disappointed if you don't off know the actual numbers. But how much, roughly, how much bigger is this Explorer than the nineteen, uh, you know, ninety Explorer? Um, is it, you know, demonstrably bigger, like a couple feet? It is, I'll have to get you back with the uh, the specifics, right? But the product changes as, as customer needs change, right? So back in 1990, right. I mean, there were uh, two row options. Now there's a, a third row comfort for all three rows of, of passengers there. So um, I can get you the specifics, but it is a little bit bigger than, than the product we had back in the 90s. Yeah. It... yeah well, people want stuff. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> certainly. And, and one of the things they want, uh, Andrew, it, well, we there's so much to talk about, but we can start with the interior because um, they really wanted a bigger screen, right? Uh, that was one of the big things. Certainly, yeah. The I'll, I'll start with the interior and then the tech as well. Those were two of the biggest things we identified when talking to customers. So the interior, I mean, it is a complete redesign. We went in, it was a complete tear up of the instrument panel, the dash, the seats, uh, the door panels, basically everything. We've, we went in meticulously crafted a new environment for customers with new materials, new colors, and new textures. Um, specifically, we went in and, and looked for uses of the hard black plastic that you'll see on vehicle interiors. Uh, so we went in, we replaced those with wrapped and stitched or fabric or leather and really elevated this interior to luxury status. It is, it's really something to see. So, um, and with that comes new tech. So like you said, the new standard 13.2 inch touchscreen that's going to be on every single Explorer we sell, as well as a 12.3 inch digital cluster. So uh, really a focal point for that interior is, is that massive touchscreen and the all new infotainment that's powering that system. Yeah, uh, before we get into the touchscreen, I'll just talk about the, um, it, as when we review vehicles, we don't like hard black plastic either. I don't know, it must be something why people yeah, don't like hard just... black plastic uh, on interiors, or it used to be hard gray plastic. I remember a time when right. all interiors were a sea of gray yep. plastic. Um, what you've done on the, on the dash is pretty neat because it reminds me of the Mach-E. You have like kind of a, it almost looks like a giant sound bar, but it is a, a a cloth wrap, basically, on the dash. And was that kind of, did the Mach-E kind of drive that? Because that's one cue I noticed right away when I got in the Mach-E, and I thought, oh, that's different. Yeah, yeah, certainly Mach-E inspired, right? Instead of the, the, the tweeter speakers that were in the A-pillar, hiding those behind a kind of a sound bar there on the dash makes it a little bit more sightly um, and and elevates that interior to to a little bit more luxury feeling on the inside so well let's talk about infotainment um you've always had the sync system but now you have a different system and uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the capabilities of that yeah so it is a brand new system called ford digital experience uh the explorer we're the first ford vehicle to get it so it's not sync 3 it's not Sync 4, but really a revolution for in-vehicle infotainment. Uh, if we added no other features uh, and, and just talked about the processing speeds of this, it is 14 times faster than the previous generation. So uh, a lot of great hardware behind it to power a lot of great new features. So it features a suite of Google applications like Google Maps, Google Assistant, and even Google Play Store. So you can download your favorite apps right into your vehicle. Favorite apps like YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, so video streaming is supported inside of the vehicle, or even take it a step further where you can have. Oh, I think we lost uh, Andrew's audio there, but uh, we will uh, we will keep going and see if he can reconnect. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, uh, one of the main Time things for is Ford vehicles. Uh, there you oh, go, there Andrew. Yeah, we lost we lost you a little bit. Your audio just uh, kicked out there for just a second, but basically, you you went through a lot of the uh, a lot of the features of the new infotainment system. Uh, is that considered Google built in? Yeah, we do have the the suite of Google products that is associated with Google built in. So the Play Store, the Maps, and the Assistant that's all included on this vehicle. So for Android users, that's what they would use. And then do you still offer Apple CarPlay? I know your big boss was talking about that would stay because one other manufacturer uh, in a general sort of way said, uh, no, we're not going to do Apple CarPlay anymore. And I know he said, well, Ford products offer that. Apple CarPlay is here. It's wireless and it's here to stay. So I'm I'm happy to report that. I am an avid <laughs> Apple CarPlay user. Um, is that so you, a I mean, it. Go ahead. Is that a real problem for the engineers to 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 figure out how to put both of them in the in the uh, software? I mean, not not to my knowledge. I mean, I'm I'm a simple marketing guy. I'm sure there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes, but to my knowledge, uh, our engineering team is able to do that and and able to execute it. So, um, really, 
offering customers multiple different choices, right? We have the suite of, of Google products that's built into the vehicle, no smartphone required. If that's not your jive, you have Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto, both wireless options there. Um, and then from the Play Store, you can download all of your Amazon apps as well if you want to listen to Audible or you want to use uh, the built-in Amazon Alexa as your digital assistant. It's really tailoring that experience for the customers on, on whatever they're looking for. You also have gaming, and it's got one of the best yep. names. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and I said if I had a band, I would call it Asphalt Nitro. It's a great, it's a great name. <laughs> great name, great game. Yeah, it is. It's yep. certainly entertaining. Uh, so be, if you have some downtime be, at. To be used when you're parked or by the passengers, please, folks, don't drive while, while you're playing Asphalt Nitro. <laughs> um, I, I, I hope, I hope, well, I, I've never read that anybody has been, has done something crazy like that, but if, I bet you can't, Soon, Andrew. It's sooner or down. later, somebody will probably try it. And but exactly, we have yeah, but, have safeguards in in place for that. So if you flip the vehicle into drive, uh, it would boot you out of of any games or video streaming or things like that. We don't we don't want you distracted while driving. But for driving no. while you're on the highway, we have some some excellent technology for those experiences as well. And that's with Blue Cruise. Um, so that is the hands free highway driving to make that stop and go traffic on your daily commute or your long road trip even more enjoyable. So hands-free, feet-free, uh, a, a, a great experience uh, as far as that's concerned. Yeah, a lot of technology. And we should mention that yeah. while there's really no base Explorer, Active is the first level of trim. And I heard it sort of described as the base and uh, the XLT from the previous model melded together. And the good thing is everyone gets this large screen, every model. It's not like you're going to get a smaller screen. Uh, it Everyone gets this big, big uh, infotainment screen. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot more standard equipment as well. So active, the, the entry level trim series now basically replacing XLT from the previous model year. So in addition to the screens, you're getting things like heated seats and Ford Copilot 360 Assist Plus. So that's your suite of driver assist technologies. Uh, so that's your adaptive cruise control, lane keeping, blind spot detection. Uh, you get trailer tow package, standard on every single Explorer. So you're gonna get the hitch receiver and tow up to 5,000 pounds, regardless of powertrain or drivetrain. Um, so, so much to talk about from a standardization standpoint that, that the value of Explorer, we're certainly excited for that this model year. Yeah, that is interesting, and we'll get after the break, uh, we will get into some of the uh, powertrains, the two different powertrains, and uh, it is unique that you can tow 5,000 pounds with, e with either one of them. So, Andrew, when we come back, we'll delve more into the 2025 Ford Explorer, so stay tuned to Cruise Control. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We will be right back after the break. Cruise Control. Welcome back to Cruise Control. It's Fred Staub and Les Jackson, and we are joined by the brand manager for Ford's 2025 Ford Explorer, Andrew Staley. Andrew, uh, so much to talk about. Let's uh, we've been con kind of concentrating on the inside. Let's jump out on the outside <clears throat> and talk about what's going on styling wise. That's new for 2025. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Certainly Explorer doesn't disappoint in this category. I have a whole camera roll full of vehicles where you park in the back of the supermarket so you don't get a door ding and you turn back and look at your vehicle and the light's hitting it just right. Uh, I, I have hundreds of pictures and I'm sure Explorer customers will feel the same once they see it. So uh, starting at the front, it looks unmistakably Explorer. So we have a new larger bold grill, new headlight architecture, new fog lamps. Uh, with a functional air curtain down there by the fog lamp. So that's going to help with your aerodynamics, uh, but really gives it a, a more sporty aesthetic up front. Um, at the rear, 
So the lift gate is all new sheet metal as well. So that includes all new tail lights, a new skid plate element down at the bottom. And then my favorite piece is this new light bar applique. So that's where the tail lights, they're actually going to extend onto the lift gate and, and illuminate on that piece of the vehicle as well. So if you're following one at night, there's no mistaking, hey, that's, that's the new Explorer. Yeah, that, that is a, a good way to ID it, isn't it, Les? I like the quad exhaust pipes. That's just, it looks neat. Yeah, sure, sure does. Sure does. Well, let's talk about let's talk about some of the various different grades of the um, model. It starts with the active, right? Which is uh, we were talking during the break. This is a well well equipped um, model. It is not stripped. It is well equipped, and uh, that comes with uh, things like a heated steering wheel and, as you said, the big display. And then you move up to the ST line, which might be a little confusing for people because there's also an ST, right? There is. Yep. So ST line, that's it's really for customers that want all of the looks and the styling and the technology of ST, but at a more affordable price point. So you get all of the looks, you can get the wheels that are available on ST. Uh, but it comes equipped with a 2.3 liter EcoBoost i4. Um, so still still an impressive powertrain, pumping out 300 horsepower, 310 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, but that pricing starts at uh, 45, almost 46,000. So uh, a little bit less than where that ST price point would come in. And just for our audience, where does the Active start on pricing? Active starts at, yep, that starts at 41,220. Uh, so if you compare that to an XLT from 24 model year, pretty comparable price walk. And you have more, more material, more, more content. Exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. You get the all new interior, all of the technology we talked about, all of that standard. Yeah. Now, if you want something a little more performance oriented, you can go for the ST. Certainly, certainly. So that is... The no compromise explorer you get all of the tech all of the looks and all of the go so that is powered by the three liter ecoboost v6 producing 400 horsepower 415 foot pounds of torque and if you're out on a track day or you have a a wide open airstrip uh it's capable of speeds up to 143 miles per hour so certainly a performance suv wow and as we already said less great wheels right yeah that's the wheels that's with the red calipers cool. that it's it's a tough look to beat it looks phenomenal yeah yeah and then uh what about the platinum the that is the top of the range and that has that brings in leather upholstery right correct yep so uh a little bit different for this model year leather was or i'm sorry platinum was previously only offered in a three liter variant to make that more accessible to customers we've now introduced a the starting powertrain as a 2.3 liter, um, and then you can option up to the three liter from there. So starting price of the 2.3 is uh, 53,120. And then for all the bells and whistles, the, the quilting on the interior, the three liter, a 21 inch wheel, you can opt for the platinum ultimate package. And that starts at 57,735. All right. Now let's talk a little bit all about right. uh, drivetrains um the base engine is is quite capable uh and then you can always get more punch if you want it certainly yep so both really capable powertrains um with each of those each of these trim series are available in either a rear wheel or a four-wheel drive variant and then standard equipment you're going to get this terrain management system as well so on the two-wheel drive versions that's six selectable drive modes they really tailor the driving experience to what you're looking for. So whether that's uh, driving on the trail or on road or an eco mode or a sport mode, uh, really tailors it for, for what customers are looking for. In four wheel drive, we also add deep snow sand mode. Uh, so the capability of Explorer is, is really uh, something that customers should be excited for. And then uh, powertrains. Uh, the first one is a four-cylinder, but it's it's no slouch. It's got what three hundred horsepower, I think, right? Correct. Yep. So three hundred horsepower, two point three liter. Uh, that's going to be single turbo, and it produces three hundred ten foot pounds of torque. And then over to the other powertrain option, the three liter. So 
the creme de la creme for Explorer. That is twin turbo V6, 400 horsepower, and 415 foot-pounds of torque. Now, it, it probably uh, there's been a lot of chatter on the web. They say, why, why no hybrid? And there's actually a, a good reason for this, because I think uh, it has to do with uh, police, the police interceptor, right? That, that really that's become so popular with that. It's kind of uh, most of them go to uh, police departments. Cer- certainly, yeah. A, an astronomical take rate for that powertrain for the police interceptor utility. So that's manufactured at the same plant there in Chicago uh, alongside the retail Explorer. Uh, but the use case of the police interceptor, some of those, those outfits, they're running 24 hours a day, spending numerous hours idling. Uh, so the value proposition there really makes a lot of sense for those agencies. Um, so to to fulfill what they're asking for there, uh, the the hybrid powertrain it's a limited commodity, so we've wanted to prioritize that and make sure those agencies are getting the powertrain they want. Yeah, it's interesting. Even if you go to order a fleet vehicle less, it's still that's as limited availability. But I know yeah. around that's here the police departments all want the hybrid because it's sure it's you know while they're sitting at a you know construction site with their lights flashing, they can be the engine can be off, and uh, that's that's saving a lot of fuel. I guess that's that's the main main thing there. And you get a little a- added boost from the hybrid for catching bad guys. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. What are some of your favorite uh, features, Andrew? What what stands out to you uh, about the 2025 uh, Ford Explorer? Yeah, certainly. Uh... I mean, you, you've said it a couple of times, but the ST wheels are a big one. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of the ST. That's how I would order one if I were to get one. Uh, but really, I think my favorite piece is is the integration of the technology with the new interior, right? Uh, so bringing all of these digital experiences and organizing them in a way that, that customers, however they want it, whether that's the Google uh, suite of features or wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay or your Amazon features as well, Bringing that into uh, this luxury interior that we've put together uh, really is is a seamless experience that the customer should be excited about. Unless they put a volume knob on the uh, on the wow. on the system, which is really important to me. I like volume knob. <laughs> Absolutely, volume knob is here to stay as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, uh, I'll pay extra for that. Uh, <laughs> I think for me on the inside, it, it is that claw, that that fabric, including the fabric on the dash, that's something you would maybe see in higher end vehicles. As we said, that was kind of uh, perhaps brought forward from the Mach E, uh, and I, I think that I think that's cool. That is a great way to get texture in the dash and uh, not just have yeah. it be a, a piece of plastic there. So, for so sure. good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, Andrew, we appreciate you joining us and telling us all about the 2025 Ford Explorer. When will it be available? It will be available early summer this year, uh, but the order banks are now open. So uh, if you like what you see over at Ford.com, go ahead, stop at your local Ford dealership. Ordering is now open. All right. We will see you down the road on Cruise Control. Great. Thank you, guys.